What up, Fight Fans? Main Man, Made Man, back at it. Y'all know how I get down. We talking boxing. So look here, man. The other day, uh, the Ring Magazine came out with their new pound-for-pound -pound rankings in which they released uh, because Floyd Mayweather has retired and allegedly retired. And so they had to update their pound-for-pound -pound list. Now, I did a video on that particular list, and I did not agree with it for the most part. Now... I said uh, in that particular video that I would come along and make my own personal pound for pound list in which I have done. And I think I stand by this list, you know what I'm saying? And um, we're going to get into it. But my criteria for picking these fighters were basically uh, what have you done for me lately style. You know, I mean, I don't want to go back what they've done three, four years ago or, or, or just because they're undefeated by fighting bum after bum after bum so that ups him up on a pound for pound list no that's not how i calculated my list the way i calculated my list is who have you beat lately um you know the, the level of, of your opposition uh the way you've handled those those fighters and uh you know in the succession that you've been taking good uh, good opposition i don't like i said before i'm not here to prop up guys who may have even undefeated records for that matter but they're fighting bum after bum after bum no 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 we're going to go with that particular criteria. So I have arranged my top 10 guys. I even have a couple honorable mentions. Um, I will start from 10 on down, and I will explain each guy and, and why I put them in the position that I have. All right? So let's get to it. All right, number 10 for me, ladies and gentlemen. Number 10 fighter for me will be on my on main man, made man's pound for pound list is Andre Ward. Andre Ward will be at number 10. And the reason I put Andre Ward at number 10 for a lot of years, and for most people, Andre Ward has been roughly either two or three on their pound for pound list. And Ring Magazine had him at number two from last I checked, you know. But me in particular, ladies and gentlemen, like I said before, what have you done for me lately? Andre Ward's fights have been very few and in between. What is this, like three fights in three years or some shit like that? You know what I mean? And then on top of that, he wasn't even fighting the top guys of his division, you know. So that was mainly the reason why I dropped Andre Ward down so far. His last fight was, what, Paul Smith. Uh, before that, he had Edwin Rodriguez. And before that, he had Chad Dawson back in 2012. You know what I'm saying? So that was mainly the reason um, that I dropped Andre Ward down to number 10. However, he is still currently uh, the WBA champion at 160, uh, 168. But... Like I said before, and he is undefeated, but his victories have been so few and in between. We've rarely seen Andre Ward. He, uh, he has not fought the fights that a lot of people want to see him fight. So that was reason for he's dropped so, so far. And a lot of other fighters over these last year, this yet last year or two have been fighting basically better fights than Andre Ward. You know what I'm saying? So that's the reason. All right, number nine. My number nine guy, Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. Uh, you know, unfortunately, Manny Pacquiao, who, like I said, he was another fighter who was always in the top five or the top three of a lot of people's pound-for-pound -pound list. Uh, Manny Pacquiao, his last few fights, he's been kind of, you know, not looking, you know, he's been looking... He's not been Manny Pacquiao, needless to say. We know he lost his last fight against Floyd Mayweather. Uh, before that, he beat Chris Algieri in very impressive fashion. And he also beat Brandon Rios. Now, uh, then he, you know, he got knocked out by Marquez. And then, of course, the victory over Bradley. But those losses to Marquez and to Floyd Mayweather, to me, has sunk Manny Pacquiao down much further. You know what I'm saying? At this particular point in his career. Uh, then, on top of like I said, he's coming off of a loss. Um in which he did not look impressive whatsoever. It wasn't even a contentious loss. Floyd pretty much swept that fight. We all know how that bullshit went on May 2nd. So Manny Pacquiao to me has dropped down to roughly about ninth place in the on the pound for pound list, which still at his particular point in his career isn't that bad. You know what I'm saying? What is he, 36, 37 years old? So that's not actually that particular bad in my eyes. So, you know, that's how I like I see it. Number eight, number eight, Lucas Matisse, 37 and three, 34 knockouts. I thought, you know, Ring Magazine didn't even have Lucas Matisse on their list, uh, which I was very surprised to see. If you, people look at Lucas Matisse's most recent fights, uh, when he beat, what, Ruslan Povotnikov, he beat John Molina Jr. in fight of the year, in fight of the year. Though he did lose to Danny Garcia in a very close fight, and he also, before that, he beat Lamont Peterson. So then he has an upcoming fight with Victor Postal for a championship belt for Danny Garcia's vacated belt. So 
you know, Lucas Matisse, especially if he beats Victor Postal, that would definitely raise his rank in my eyes. But Lucas Matisse has been fighting some very, very contentious fights at the 140-pound division, you know. And uh, he's been looking impressive and for the most part in all of them. Even in the Danny Garcia fight, uh, he was in that fight, you know, he was neck and neck with Danny Garcia until he suffered that cut throughout that fight, for those who remember. But he was right there with Danny Garcia, man. And he's, also, he's been looking for a rematch for Danny uh, ever since that fight. But however, Danny now does not care campaign at the 140 pound division anymore but however Lucas Matisse has been looking very very sharp um He's poised to become a world champion if he beats Victor Postal. Like I said, that will raise his rank in my eyes. And he's he's continuously fighting fights that we'd like to see, very exciting fights that we'd like to see him fight. Uh, whether it's from him suffering knockdowns and getting back into the fight, showing the heart of a champion, the heart of a warrior. I like Lucas Matisse, and to me, his stock has been is rising over the last few fights, and I place him roughly at number eight. So number seven, ladies and gentlemen. Guillermo Rigandau. I hate trying to pronounce this guy's first name, but Rigandau. Rigandau is my number seven pound for pound fighter. A lot of people may have him believe even a little higher. I believe Ring Magazine did have uh, Rigandau higher, but just like Andre Ward, you know, even though he's undefeated and and, and, he, and he does hold two belts uh, down in in his division. Still, Rigandau has been fighting very few and in between. Now, I understand, folks, it's not no fault to him. A lot of people have avoiding him. You know, we haven't seen Rigandau fight in a, more, in a significant fight since possibly Nonito Donaire, in my, in my opinion, you know. And that's been quite some time ago. Uh, but it's not, it's not his fault that a lot of guys avoid him, you know what I'm saying? And I totally get that. But the fact is, he's been fighting very few and in between. Um... The best at his divisions seemingly, for some reason, do not want to fight him for some odd reason. I have no idea why, but they don't want to fight him. He's very fundamentally sound. We all know what Rick and Dow can do in the ring. Very, very fundamentally sound fighter. Uh, but once again, these guys don't want to. They, they, there's talk of him possibly going up to 126 pounds. He campaigns at 122, so there's talk of him possibly going up to 126 to try to line up some sort of deal with uh, with Lomachenko. I hear they're trying to get that thing done. But you know, the fact of the matter is, he does hold two belts at the 122 pound division. A lot of fighters have avoided him. Carl Frampton and Scott Quigg, man, they they're looking to fight each other. Uh, Scott Quigg is, is Rigandau's what uh, uh, mandatory, or he's the interim champion. He's the interim WBA champion. But however, he's not looking to get the fight with Rigo. We didn't see Leo Santa Cruz pursue that fight when he was campaigning, pa campaigning, painting at 122. He now fights at 126. Uh, we could he couldn't get fights with uh, guys like um, Chris Avalos. We couldn't see him get fights with that of that nature. So. It's looking like Rigo is, is going to have to move up to 126 to get a contentious fight. But, you know, during his reign at 122, uh, he's been pretty much stomping out everybody. You know what I'm saying? And he does hold two major belts at the division. And like I said before, no one's want to step up. So I hold Regan Dow at seventh pound for pound. Number six, Tim Desert Storm Bradley, ladies and gentlemen. Tim Desert Storm Bradley, my dude. Some people may even have this guy's higher. He did make the Ring Magazine's uh, pound for pound list as well. But Timothy Bradley, who's the current WBO uh, champion, uh, you know, he inherited this belt that Floyd Mayweather vacated. Uh, this is the belt that Floyd Mayweather took from Manny Pacquiao. Uh, but, however, Tim Bradley has been looking impressive since his loss to Manny Pacquiao. He's beaten Jesse Vargas in his last fight. Uh, the, before that, he went to that draw with Diego Chavez. Most say that Timothy Bradley won that fight. And he also beat Juan Manuel Marquez in a very impressive fight as well. So, Timothy Bradley's stock has definitely been on the rise. He's been taking very contentious fights. He's been looking impressive in those fights. Uh, he's not running away from 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 big name fights. He's possibly even looking to go up in weight after this fight. From what we hear, uh, he wants uh, he wouldn't mind getting a fight with Kell Brook. He wouldn't mind getting fights at 154 if it took that. I even heard Tim Bradley say he'll take on Triple G. We know that ain't realistic right now, but he said he'll do it if he needs to do it. He he wants to fight the fights that matter. Always like the Timothy Bradley's attitude. We know he's going through that trainer switch thing right now. He's now training with Teddy Atlas. Uh, he dropped Joel Diaz for reasons that we've covered in previous videos. But Timothy Bradley has been looking very, very good in his fights lately. And, um, 
even though he went to that draw with Diego Chavez, Diego Chavez is no pushover. He's no bum by far. It's going to be interesting to see his upcoming fight with Kell Brook on how that fight's going to go. But Timothy Bradley still, um, in my opinion, he's WBO champ, well-deserved, and he's been looking good in his fights. And those are some contentious fights, good names at 147, in my opinion. So that's what I have, Timothy Bradley at six. Number five, ladies and gentlemen, number five, in my opinion, and I, this guy didn't even make the Ring Magazine's list either, Saul Canelo Alvarez, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, though Saul Canelo Alvarez has an upcoming upcoming championship fight with Miguel Cotto at 160, the damage that he did at 154 was honestly very noticeable. He took on some of the best at 154. He would have been world champion if he would have fought uh, Erislandy Law for his belt, in which they did not campaign fight for that belt. But he fought Erislandy Law, and then uh, after that, he beat James Kirkland. Uh, those are two premier fighters at 154, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And he basically uh, overcame adversity in that Laura fight, I thought. Some people don't know. Some people didn't think uh, Canelo actually won that fight, but I, th I definitely think he did uh, due to the detrimental of Aristotle Laura staying away from Canelo Alvarez a little too much in that fight. Uh, Canelo Alvarez becoming the aggressive, showing very, very good body work in that fight, and uh, then decapitating James Kirkland. Granted, James Kirkland been out of the ring for quite some time, and he was nurturing injuries, and he was without his trainer, and Wolf, and all that good stuff. But the fact is, Canelo got, went in there and got the job done. Now, before that, those two fights, he lost to Floyd Mayweather. At down, uh, but, however, you know, he, he was world champion uh, at that time. You know what I mean? But he lost to Floyd Mayweather. And you know how people say losing to Floyd Mayweather doesn't really mean nothing. But, however, since his loss to Floyd Mayweather, Canelo Alvarez has been looking very, very impressive. Uh, he has a big, big fight with Miguel Cotto on the horizon. It's going to be interesting to see who wins that fight. Uh, and if he wins that fight, his stock and my my eyes rises some more but this guy has been fighting in fights that matter he's not been running away he's not been taking a trail of bums even before the loss of Floyd Mayweather he was fighting a uh, quality fights in which he fought Austin Trout uh, he fought Shane Mosley and you know and the list goes on and on so uh, Saul Canelo Alvarez to me is my fifth pound for pound fighter I think he's looking very impressive number four Terrence Crawford ladies and gentlemen Terrence Crawford the undefeated young phenomenon Looking very good campaigning campaigning at the 140 pound division. The man record stands at uh uh damn what is Terrence Crawford record? Terrence Crawford record 26 and 0, 18 knockouts. If you look at his last few fights, uh, Tomas Delorme looking very impressive against him. Looking very impressive against Derry Jean. Um, uh, Bell Train he beat Bell Train he beat Gamboa down at 135 and him and Ricky Burns. Uh, two premier fighters at the 135 pound division uh, but however since those fights he's just been looking very impressive in all of his fights man um, showing great fundamentals of boxing this kid has a big big future ahead of him uh, there's even talks of possibly about a fight with Manny Pacquiao we know he fights under the top ranked banner so it's going to be interesting to see if they send him around that top ranked carousel but he's fought he's beat a lot of he still has a, lot, a long way to go at 140 don't get me wrong um, there's still a lot of fights at 140 that I would love to see uh, Terrence Crawford involved in, uh, but we know about the politics of boxing. A lot of those fights are possibly off limits to him, but uh, Lucas Matisse, I don't think he fights with Al Heyman anymore, so if Lucas Matisse gets through Victor Postal, it'd be interesting to see if he wants to take on Terrence Crawford, uh, but there's still other fights that could be possibly made at 140 pound division for Terrence Crawford, uh, maybe a Chris Algieri, Ruzan Povotnikov, you know what I mean, or Mauricio Herrera. Um, you know, those are good fights, uh, I believe, for uh, Terrence Crawford, but however, he's taking on some of the top names there, maybe even John Molina, I don't know, does he still fight with Heyman, but anyway, but those are some good names there, still left at 140, but there's even talks of Terrence Crawford possibly even moving up also uh, to 147, and we know Terrence Crawford is also the WBO world champion at 140 pound division, at the 140 pound division, so he's doing his thing, man, he's really doing his thing. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if he can get involved uh, with fighting for some of those vacant titles. Well, well the Lucas, Lucas Matisse and Postal fight will be for that WBC vacant title. The WBA title that Danny Garcia vacated is still, uh, still well, no, Adrian Bronner and, and Khabib, Alok Verdiev, or whoever the fuck, they're fighting for that WBA title undeservingly so, uh, Jose Benavitez should be in, involved in that fight, but anyway, Terrence Crawford has still been doing his thing at 140, he did his thing at 135, looking very impressive, looking very, very good, big future ahead of Terrence Crawford, um, and, and, and his stock is definitely on the rise, I have him as my fourth pound-for-pound -pound fighter, 
Number three, and this may come as a surprise given I did a video a few videos ago going on the dude, but Gennady Golovkin, ladies and gentlemen. I give Gennady Golovkin third pound-for-pound pound fighter, okay? Yeah, I give it to him. Though he has not beat the best that 160 has to offer, though I think he still has a long way, but that is at no fault to Gennady Golovkin. Once again, um, that you know, a lot of the guys is just uh, avoiding Gennady Golovkin. Uh, Daniel Jacobs has been the man's mandatory for quite some time, but given that they fight on different networks, there's bullshit with that. He has an upcoming fight with David Lemieux, the IBF champion at 160. Uh, it's going to be a very, very good fight. We can't wait to see that fight to see how that goes. Uh, but however, Gennady Golovkin still has some good, I mean, some of the mediocre CB level fighters at 160. He's pretty much conquered all those guys. Uh, William Monroe and Martin Mary and uh, Antonio Rubio and who else? We had Daniel Gill and Curtis Stevens and guys like that. He took the belt actually from Curtis Stevens. So, uh, but he's looking impressive in all of his fights. He's beat majority of them by knockout. The man record is 33 and 0, 30 knockouts. You know, so all of his fights, with the exception of three, has been taken by knockout. He is undefeated. He's also the WBC interim champion, which he sits in the wings, uh, looking at the Cotto and Canelo fight, uh, possibly looking to get the winner of that fight if they don't run from the man, you know what I mean? But however, he has been, other, uh, other than being able to get some of the other good guys at 160, I will, I, but we know the politics involved with the shit, but I would love to see him against Peter Quillen. I would love to see him against Daniel Jacobs. I would love to see him against Andy Lee, um, you know, maybe even uh, Billy Joe Saunders or guys like that. Um, I would love to see him in those fights. Though he may even win most of those fights, it's still we haven't seen. Those are some of the better names that 160 has to offer, you know. We just haven't seen Triple G in those fights. There's talks of him. A lot of people wanted him to go up in weight to possibly take on Andre Ward or take on some of the guys at 168. You know, he agreed to fight Chavez Jr. at 168, but for some reason, he won't fight Andre Ward at 168. He told him he had to come down to 64, in which Andre Ward ain't looking to do. You know what I mean? But the fact still remains, Gennady Golovkin has dominated everybody that's been in the ring with him at the 160-pound division. Uh, all the B, B+, plus, C-, minus, C plus level fighters at 160, he's just breezed all the way through him. So he's dominated them all. But however, and he took him in rapid succession, unlike anyone else that possibly at 160. So I grant him third pound, pound for pound. Number two, Sergey Kovalev. As if there was any surprise, ladies and gentlemen, Sergey Kovalev has been doing his thing at the 175 pound division um he's been just taking all all the top guys he beat john pascal uh of course before that we know he beat the uh legendary bernard hopkins oh bernard hopkins granted as it may i get it but however when b hop fought uh sergey kovalev he was a champion he was a um he was a world champion so he beat b hop he beat muhammadi uh you know those were all good good fights at the 175 pound division those are all at top names believe it or not at the 175 pound division uh we, we he's he has basically every fucking belt at 175 he has the wba he has the ibf he has the wbo only one he doesn't have is that that green belt that wbc belt in which it's being held by adonis stevenson uh for whatever reason some people say adonis stevenson is running from sergey kovalev uh he you know he signed a network deal in which he knows uh, that takes the Kovalev fight off the table for him, and now that fight is pretty much at this particular time not available. You know what I mean? So, but however, uh, with the exception of having the WBC, he has every other major belt. Uh, he's just basically stomping on the 175 division. A lot of people want to see Ward go up to 175 and fight Sergey Kovalev. That would be a great, great fight, in my opinion. We see Andre Ward working himself up to 175 with his last fight taking place at a catch weight of what 172 or whatnot uh so and he looked impressive in that fight of he, granted it was paul smith but it took place at the catch weight and some people hopefully like myself believe that andre ward is working his way up to 175 to take on sergey kovalev hopefully you know what i mean but however sergey is dominating the 175 division nobody in sight uh no one thinks uh no one will beat uh sergey kovalev anytime soon uh, you know what I mean? So it's 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 a good it's it, I mean he's dominating, you know, and he and he's doing it very in, in, in very impressive fashion at that. Twenty eight wins, zero losses, twenty five knockouts. Uh, there's even some allegations of the man juicing. I'm not gonna get into all that, but however, he's doing his fucking thing, running things, owning all the belts, 
holding the belts, beating anybody they put him in the ring with. Now, my number one pound-for-pound pound fighter, now the retirement of Floyd Money Mayweather has occurred, ladies and gentlemen, the former number one pound-for-pound pound champion, well, allegedly retired. He's still holding the WBC belt at 147, so that's interesting. Uh, but the fact is, and he's still also holding one of his 154 titles, but the fact of the matter is, my number one Pound for pound fighter. I'm pretty sure after all the names I've known, I've just listed, there should be any doubt about who is who's left. And that is Vladimir Klitschko, ladies and gentlemen. For all these years, people have always had Vladimir Klitschko in their top three pound for pound. Now, Floyd Mayweather retiring, Vladimir Klitschko did not decline since then, ladies and gentlemen. He's beating everybody at the heavyweight division worth mentioning. He's beating your Brian Jennings. He's beating your he beaten Pelev. He beat Povetkin. Uh, we're waiting and hoping for a Deontay Wilder fight. But however, he owns all the belts at basically heavyweight with the exception of the WBC, just like Sir Kovalev. He has the WBA. He has the IBF. He has the WBO. Um, he's supposed to have been involved with the upcoming fight with Tyson Fury. Um, but however, we see he suffered a calf injury or some shit like that during training camp. And so the fight got postponed. Uh, most people believe that he did not take Tyson Fury serious. Uh, now that with all the antics of Fury possibly getting uh, Klitschko all riled up and shit, now he's going to take the fight serious. And uh, he's going to look to go back and train seriously. But the fact still remains, uh, Vladimir Klitschko has been dominating the heavyweight division all of these years, we did not never get a Bermain Stavern uh, or Klitschko fight, and yet and we haven't got that fight yet, and and we haven't got a what? Uh, uh, we didn't get a. I don't. Th I don't think he fought Steve Cunningham. Uh, he didn't. We didn't get the. Um, uh, what's my man who running around making fun of him all the fucking time? Uh, Briggs. We didn't get a Briggs fight, but I mean, come on, man. Well, I think he definitely crushes Shannon Briggs. But the fact still remains is that. Vladimir Klitschko has stood atop of the heavyweight division. No one has been able to knock him off that uh, off that hill. The man record is immaculate. 64 wins, 3 losses, 53 wins by way of knockout. Like I said before, holding all the major belts with the exception of the WBC that's being held by Deontay Wilder. And Deontay Wilder seemingly staying far away from Vladimir Klitschko. Uh, he doesn't feel as though he's ready yet. His people doesn't feel as though he's ready yet. Hell, a lot of his fans don't even feel as though he's ready yet. But we want to see it. I just did a video on that. Actually, that was my last video about Deontay Wilder saying that, look, you're an Olympian. You're in your prime. You're the WBC champion. Fuck all that. You're not ready yet. Them days are over. You got to get in there and fight the best. Put all the fucking belts on the line, man. This is your opportunity. He wants to wait for Klitschko to possibly even lose or wait till he's 40, 41 years old to fight him. And, uh, of course, then he'll beat him then. But the fact still remains that Klitschko is standing up top of the heavyweight division. Uh, doesn't look like no one with the uh, no time soon is going to knock him off. I think he beats Tyson Fury, in my opinion. Um, you know, but Deontay Wilder doesn't want to take the fight right now. Just, I just don't see anyone else. Um, Anthony Joshua is on the rise, but he's not quite there yet. Uh, but that's, I don't see anyone else there. I just don't see anyone there yet. So, uh, in my opinion, all of these years, Klitschko has been in and everyone is either second or third rated pound for pound fighter, uh, with the retirement of Floyd and with the non decline of Klitschko that to me elevates him to the number one pound for pound fighter. Uh, a, a lot of people now. Let me just put this out there because the Ring Magazine has uh, the guy Chocolito, Roman Gonzalez, as their number one pound-for-pound pound fighter. And as you see, he didn't even make my list. Uh, there's reason for such, you know what I mean? The reason is, is that Roman Gonzalez, if you go look through his fights, ladies and gentlemen, I did a little research on the kid. Uh, if you go back to Chocolito's fights, um, the thing is, he... He is the WBC champion, you know what I mean? But the fact is, and he does have a very impressive record, 43 wins, zero losses, 37 uh, wins by knockout. But the fact is, if you look at his level of competition, he did not fight any of the top guys uh, down at those divisions, you know what I mean? Um, like, the division that he fights in now, uh, which is, what, the 112-pound division, you know, he didn't fight a lot of the 112-pound guys yet, man. He didn't fight a lot of the top guys. He fought none of the champions. Uh, he didn't fight any of the top five guys at 112 at this point. Um, he hasn't had a very significant fight since uh, Rocky Fuentes, and that was a what a couple. Uh, he's ranked seventh now uh, at the 112-pound division. Uh, he has an upcoming fight with Brian Villora, and this is going to be a very telling fight. He's going to be fighting on the undercard of Triple G and Lemieux. Uh, but, you know, like I said before, uh, 
just hasn't had a major good fight. A lot of his major big victories took place at the lower divisions, like the 108 and the 105 divisions, not necessarily at the 112 divisions. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of those guys, man, I hate to say it this way, but a lot of those, those 43 wins, man, were cab drivers. I'm sorry. Uh, it does not fight any of the top guys for whatever reason. I don't, I don't say, I'm not saying he wouldn't uh, or he can't, but he just hasn't done it. You know what I mean? I'm looking at the names at the 112 division. He's fought none of them. If you look at his resume, he's fought none of them. He's fought none of the guys that, that's currently at the top of the list at the 108-pound division. He's fought none of them. You know what I mean? At the 115-pound division, he's fought none of them. So you look at his list, and I hate to say it, though he is on the rise at the particular moment, uh, some people believe that the Ring Magazine elevated him to number one because of the upcoming card with Triple G and Lemieux, and they want to up that card, and, and they want to up these fighters, you know what I mean? But, I mean, I'm sorry, man. You do your research on the guy. He just he just, he just, doesn't deserve to be number one pound for pound in my eyes. When I first did the video about that Ring Magazine shit, I did say he possibly, but I had to do more research on the guy, and once I looked more into him, I just, though he's WBC champion, uh, he's just not my number one guy. I'm not saying he's not in the top 20, maybe even the top 15 for that matter. But top 10, I just, I just don't know where to put him uh, with his le with his level of, of of competition that he's been fighting. I just honestly don't know where I can honestly put the guy. You know what I mean? Uh, now he did fight Juan Estrada. Now, and I, I will give him that one. Uh, and uh, Juan Estrada is the w current WBA champion at 112, so he defeated him, but that was quite some time ago, you know what I mean? Uh, so that's why I say I put that, that put, to me, puts him on the outskirts of of being in the in the top 10 pound for pound fighters. But outside of Juan Estrada, like I said before, and um, Rocky Fuentes, you know, those fights are very few and in between. That, that's all this guy's pretty much got. Now, he has an upcoming fight with Brian Valora. Brian Valor is rated very, very high at the 112-pound division. Uh, he's second rated by the WBC. Uh, so, it, it, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how that fight goes. To me, that ups his stats. He's also ranked first uh, by the WBO. Um, and Juan Estrada, whom he did, he's, like I say, he's the current WBA champion, and he's also the interim WBO champion. So Juan Estrada was a very, very big victory for him. That was possibly the biggest victory of Roman Gonzalez's career out of all of those 43 fights or so. You know what I mean? That was the biggest victory to date for him. So that is my top 10, guys. Um, oh, a few honorable mentions. Uh, guys who possibly could have made the list, but they just didn't uh, for whatever reason. Um, I had Aristandy Laura on the outskirts. Uh, Aristandy Laura, a uh, very good fighter. He's been doing his thing at 154 for a long, long time. He is still currently the, the what, WBC, I want to say, he's the WBC champion. Oh, he's the WBC uh, uh, champion, and Floyd Mayweather is the, I mean, he's the WBA champion at 154 and floyd mayweather is the wba super champion you know what i mean so but however Lars had that belt for quite some time um you know even though he did lose to saul canelo alvarez and he shouldn't be champion that was mainly the reason he didn't make the list because technically if they would have been fighting for the belt he would not have no belt right now uh but he still he has a pretty good resume he beat uh delvin rodriguez in his last fight uh, he defeated Ishe Smith. He, be, he defeated Austin Trout. He defeated Alfredo Angulo. So he has some pretty decent names at that particular uh, weight class. But um, with the exception to the loss of Canelo Alvarez, it wouldn't be actually a bad uh, secession of fight, a rapid secession of fighters. But he did not make my list, unfortunately. But I do have him right there on the outskirts. Um, also, Danny Garcia. Only reason Danny Garcia, if Danny Garcia would have remained at the 140 pound division. Danny Garcia would have been in my top five pound for pound because he ran the 140 pound division. He had all the belts, but he did vacate his belts. He's now campaigning at 147. He has done really at this particular point, not much damage at the 147 pound division. He only fought Pauli Malignaggi uh, for that matter. But however, prior to, uh, to coming to 147, Danny was the dude, man. Danny was the motherfucking man, man. He beat Lucas Matisse. Uh, he beat Zab Zuda. He beat Lamont Peterson, controversy or, or what. He beat Mauricio Herrera, controversy or what. Uh, you know what I mean? But the fact is, he had major, major victories under his belt. Uh, Eric Morales, you know what I mean? He had some very, very good names under his belt, but that as it would, all was done at the 140-pound division. 
Uh, some people may call me a hypocrite for that because I put Terrence Crawford, and a lot of his damage was done at 135. But, however, C Crawford has done some damage now at 140. He took a couple good fights at 140. Uh, unfortunately, Danny Garcia, and he's also champion at 140. But, unfortunately, Danny Garcia is just getting his feet wet at 147. Give him a couple fights. I'm pretty sure he would definitely be back in my pound-for-pound pound list if he wins these fights and, and take on decent names and take them on impressively. There's a lot of good names surrounding around Danny Garcia at this particular moment. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how he campaigns at 147. But until he does get a couple more fights under his belt at 147, he, then he will make it back into my list. But he's right there, man. He's right there on the outskirts. You know what I'm saying? Uh, another fighter is on the outskirts is Miguel Cotto. Uh, Miguel Cotto, who's the current 160-pound WBC champion, he defeated Sergio Martinez for that belt. And then uh, after that, uh, after he defeated Sergio Martinez, he defeated Daniel Gill. Uh, and, you know, and before that, he fought Delvin Rodriguez. But given that, like I said, he, he beat Sergio, one-legged Sergio, and it was, it was at a catch weight. That's very iffy to me. Daniel Gill is like the strongest opponent. Uh, and he also has an upcoming fight with Saul Canelo Alvarez. But... Maybe if Cotto can get one more, if he beats Canelo, he definitely makes my top 10 pound for pound list. But at this particular moment, though he is WBC world champion, Daniel Gill, folks, I mean, really, and uh, one-legged Sergio Martinez and Delvin Rodriguez, man. Prior to that, hell, Miguel Cotto was pondering retirement, for crying out loud. But uh, I need him to get one more big victory to make it into my pound for pound list, and then I'll be throwing them all in. So those are some of my honorable mentions. Hopefully, I didn't leave out anybody at the particular time. Uh, those the, the 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 top ten that I named, those particular group of fighters has just been to me on their game. They've been doing their thing. One quick one, one more quick run through. Number one, Vladimir Klitschko. Number two, Sergey.